Your home's value and the price tag that goes with it has only gone up over the last decade. We take a look at the annual Realtors Report to see what that means in terms of the overall health of Bozeman's growth. And learn how a man in Butte is trying to scam casinos out of cash and how he's trying to hide his identity. Good morning to you and happy Friday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Ella has our weekend forecast. It's going to be hopefully some rainbows and sunshines. We'll talk about that in just a few <laughs> moments. No? Yeah, maybe not. Our top story for you now. Authorities are investigating a possible homicide after finding a body near Canyon Ferry Lake. Yeah, on Wednesday, Lewis and Clark County detectives located the body of a deceased adult man near Cave Gulch Road. Detectives had been following up on a missing, missing persons call. The man was reported missing by a family member as of Monday. The Lewis and Clark County Undersheriff says evidence in the investigation supports foul play. Now, if you have any information, you're asked to contact the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office. And most of us have seen how much the cost of living has gone up over the last decade all across Gallatin Valley. Yeah, that includes average home values, many increasing by the tens of thousands of dollars. MTN's Cody Boyer sat down with a local realtor to explain what is happening. Ten people move to Bozeman every day. 10 people. Moving to Bozeman requires finding a house to live in, right? Now you might need a realtor for that, like Courtney Foster. And for some living in the valley, growth is almost becoming a bad word. There's definitely a lot of people that would argue that it's not healthy, right? Because that average sales number, it's too high for two average income people that live together in this town. Foster says a recent hike in the bar graphs and dotted lines, well, it's steady Eddie staying steady. It used to be that every month when I would run those reports, I would see that the new listings that came on the market, so let's say we had 50 new listings come on the market, we would have 48 or 49 sales that month. The Gallatin Association of Realtors recently released this year's numbers, breaking down median home prices and more across Bozeman, Belgrade, Three Forks, and Big Sky. When you look at those numbers, it's hard to miss the increases, just like the number of for sale signs when you're out on the town. Let's go around looking at some houses. It was 425 and now it went up to 465 so far year to date. So those of us who live in Gallatin County, we're getting pretty used to the word growth. But $30,000, actually a little bit more in terms of the average home value here in Bozeman alone, well, according to real estate and those who are in it, like Courtney, that's healthy growth. Within Bozeman's city limits alone, the report shows that the average sales price of a single family home, as Courtney pointed out, is about $465,000. Same goes for condos and townhomes. Homes. The median sales price runs at about $317,000, up from $300,000 in 2019. But looking at new condo listings, there are 14% more new condos out there than last year. Not all these homes sit vacant because people don't want them, right? And that's the sign of a town that's dying. So with finding a home here, Foster says it might take being a bit creative. Realtors can help. Keep your chin up. There's, there's a place for everybody. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Keep your chin, my chin up, up. Uh, You can find more from that report on our website. It includes more details from across those four cities. Number of homes for sale over the last three years to the average days each home stays on the market. Keep your chin up. There's a home for you Lynn, for 460000 Lynn and I bought our house in 1990. You know what we paid for it? $65,000. Wow. Wow. 1990. Smart man. Three bedroom. Congratulations. It's the only smart Everyone's thing really we've ever happy paid for. for you. It's the only smart wow. thing Lynn and I ever did financially. We've been ripped off on everything else. But there you go. <laughs> Matt? I'm sure everyone's very happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Moving along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. This is morning into the 40s. Uh, we might actually have some rainbows this weekend. Oh, really? Because you're going to have some rain. Okay, great. Uh, temperatures <laughs> into the 40s. You were talking about sunshine and rainbows. There may be That's some right. of both. That's right. Uh, Halfway there. Um, That's right. It looks like we're going to be dealing with our showers, our heaviest showers through the day today, though. And we'll see the showers fade as we head into the evening and certainly uh, as you head into tomorrow. Daytime highs only into the 50s today. We'll break down your complete forecast in just a minute. You know what Dolly Parton says? No. If you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. That's right. Yep. Okay, well, let's move on. <laughs> let's get back to the news here. It is now 6.33, coming up on 6.34. Our top story for you out of Bozeman, a 29-year-old Bozeman man is facing serious charges after investigators say a teen's girl stepfather told police that the man had raped her. 
Yeah, and there could be more victims. According to court documents, Jared Jamal Williams is charged with statutory rape after investigators say he had sex and exchanged nude photos with a 15-year-old girl. Williams was already wanted for a misdemeanor crime and had been convicted in other states of shoplifting and assault. Investigators say Williams admitted to the act, telling them that he ran from New York to Montana to get away from another similar charge involving another 15-year-old girl there. And according to investigators, Williams also admitted to sharing nude photos with a third girl who is 17 years old. The defendant admitted to that um, in the, with the interview of the victim. Uh, the girl did not admit to it, but uh, Detective Metcalf uh, believed that she was not telling the truth about that. There's other circumstances that corroborated the defendant's um, confession to that. Uh, Williams' bail set at $75,000. He could face up to 100 years for the charge of sexual assault and up to another 100 years for the rape charge. And a Livingston man accused of taking photos of young girls inside the Bozeman Walmart, then deleting those photos, is now officially facing a peeping Tom charge. According to court documents, Mark Booth is charged with viewing or recording, which is a misdemeanor. The 52-year-old also faces a felony charge of tampering with evidence after Bozeman City Police say he deleted the footage before detectives could investigate it. Court documents show the photos were female children wearing clothing like pajamas and skirts. Booth remains in the Gallatin County Jail. And Butte police are looking for a quick change artist who attempted to scam some casinos out of Monday money on Wednesday nights. Police say a man scammed this Butte casino out of about $400 when he asked the attendant to give him change for $800. Police say the same man unsuccessfully tried to do this at two other casinos in town. He's kind of aggressive with them. He tries to hurry him up, tries to get stuff going right away, and that's what quick chain artists do. They try to get you confused on what, 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 what you're trying to do. And in that confusion, they will um, they usually get some money, um, more money than they're entitled to, and then, they, uh, then they'll leave with that cash. We are, we are told police reviewing video from the casinos to try to identify that suspect. And the person suspected in starting the North Hills fire near Helena now faces two charges. Yeah, that uh, fire burned more than 5,000 acres, forced evacuations, threatened dozens of homes. The United States Bureau of Land Management Law Enforcement cited the suspect with one count of causing a fire other than a campfire and one count of burning timber, trees, slash, and brush outside a campfire. The suspect will be fined a total of $1,060. Authorities are not releasing the name until that investigation, though, is complete. And the Montana Highway Patrol welcomed 13 new state troopers yesterday in Helena. The newly commissioned troopers were selected from more than 200 applicants to join MHP. The men completed 20 weeks of rigorous training to lead up to the day. Trooper Thomas Clausen of Plentywood received both the Michael Haynes Memorial Grant and the Camp Commander Award. Clausen said he hopes to live up to the ideals of the Montana Highway Patrol and to be someone that the public can rely on. Uh, just to continue to serve the people and and be that person they're looking up to and always be a good person, I guess. Being someone that's reliable and they can depend on, be a leader of the community. Wow, what a bright young man. Now the new troopers will now go through 12 weeks of field training before heading off to their duty stations. Welcome aboard all of them. Yeah, that's great. Well, it's been a record-setting summer for the nearby Bakken oil field in North Dakota. Jury, uh, excuse me, July oil's production set a new all-time record for the state's bustling oil industry at 1,442,000 barrels per day. Natural gas production also soared to new highs. Yeah, the number of producing wells also set a new high in July, approaching 16,000 producing wells. As of this week, there are 62 active oil rigs operating in the Bakken, far off the region's all-time high of 218 active rigs set back in 2012. Now, with this past weekend's attack of Saudi Arabia oil facilities, the industry has been keeping an eye on the price of oil in the world market. And new today, the Missoula City County Health Department is issuing another warning about the whooping cough in the community. Missoula was plagued by outbreak of whooping cough or pertussis last year. Now that we've got the kids back in school and everybody is congregating in smaller spaces as the weather is changing as well, um, we're preparing to see another uptick possibly. Yeah, this comes on the heels of a year that has seen 172 new cases of pertussis or whooping cough. FAR says the cases have continued to trickle in over the summer and since the school year began, two new cases have developed. And the health department is working to see if any other students have been exposed or have those symptoms. FAR says it is important for the community to keep up with vaccinations and not let their guard down, especially for those most susceptible. 
Also new this morning, President Trump has signed an executive order that directs the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to modernize the way that the country develops flu vaccines. The executive order also encourages more people to get vaccinated. It establishes a task force led by the U.S. Department of Defense and Health and Human Services to create a more modern and rapid method of production with longer lasting results. A senior official says it currently takes the government about six months lead time and about 900,000 chicken eggs per day to get that seasonal flu vaccine ready to match the year's virus. The official also said if a pandemic flu were to break out, it's unlikely the United States would be prepared to manage the outbreak with the current system. Now here's a novel way to get a flu shot. Yeah, from the comfort of their own vehicles. People in Great Falls lined up to get flu shots. It's so great because there's, there's no other way that's as fast and convenient to get your flu shot and fight the flu and protect yourself and everyone around you um, from the flu this coming season. drive through clinic put on by the Cascade City County Health Department. That's a great idea. The Center for Disease Control, Control and Prevention recommends people get vaccinated by the end of October because it can take up to two weeks for antibodies to develop in the body and provide protection against the flu. Also, the Harvard Medical School says mid-October is the ideal time to get a shot to have protection throughout the flu season. Well, that's a pretty neat idea. There Just you go. stick Drive your arm out the window and go, get the shot. Put a little band-aid on oh, and off you go. Yeah, there you go. Happy Friday to you. It is time for a quick break.